Welcome to the great Italian food journey, a National Geographic traveller and Italian National Tourist Board event. Thank you for joining us here at Aldo's and his wonderful house. We're at Aldo's Kitchen. We've taken every measure to secure we are COVID safe. Everybody behind the camera is wearing masks. We're all socially distanced so we could bring you this live event. Now, I've got two fantastic gentlemen with me tonight. Obviously, Aldo, because it's his house, and the wonderful Joe Fatterini. Now, my name's Joe Hurd, by the way. I am an Italian English presenter, cook, and writer. You might have seen me on Saturday Kitchen before, but I'm joined tonight by the wonderful, the imitable Aldo Zilli. Now, Aldo Zilli is a renowned restaurant, an award-winning restaurateur and chef who grew up in a so rural region of Italy. We're going to talk about some of the regions later in a town called Alba Adriatica. He's renowned for his seafood and his vegetarian Italian dishes. He grew up learning how to cook at the apron strings of his mother in a large family before going on to catering college. After this, he opened some of the most renowned restaurants in the UK. Zilli Bar, Zilli Cafe, Signor Zilli, Zilli Green, and of course, the iconic Zilli Fish, which was probably one of the most infamous restaurants in Soho and one of the most treasured um, up until its closure in 2012, when Aldo hung up his apron strings and pursued a career in the media and radio and television. You've got 10 books, Aldo. You've got two autobiographies. <laughs> Being Zilly and uh, My Italian Country Childhood. Brilliant read, well worth a read. Um, and now, obviously, with the new project, Casa Zilly. Over there, this wonderful gentleman as well, Mr. Joe Fatterini, uh, one of the UK's leading wine experts and merchants for over 20 years, supplying some of the best restaurants and hotels in the industry. Joe is also the wine expert on the ITV's, one of ITV's flagship shows, The Wine Show. And during, uh, during lockdown, Joe, managed to still broadcast effectively from your loft, Joe. I did from the attic. In fact, you can go watch, um, and we, we go through Italy. We're going from sort of north to south today, aren't we, yes, on Italy? Absolutely. We are. Series one of The Wine Show, which is on Amazon Prime. You can go and watch us go north to south in Italy there. I'm going to start opening a bottle of wine, if you don't mind. Go ahead. As and I've been doing in my attic <laughs> all the way through lockdown. And while we're doing that, we're just going to run through it. If you're watching us on Zoom, you can message, send us in. There's a chat function, so you can tell us if you've got any questions, just fire it through. It'll come through my earpiece. As well, there's also some polls going on tonight. And, you know, feel free to share anything you're watching on social media. Of course, it's at Nat Geo Travel UK. Right, Aldo. Oh. First rest, we get to you now. We can talk Ma about it. My <laughs> caro, bellissimo, Joe. I've had an introduction incredible. That's the best introduction I've ever heard of in my life about me. What about you? Well, I, I gave myself a very humble introduction. Now, Fantastico. Aldo, what is, we've got three recipes and we're really going from top to bottom today, aren't we? Italy? Yeah, I mean, Italy, it's not, Italian food, in my view, doesn't really exist, does it? It's all about the regions and it's regionality. That's where everybody cooks their mum's recipes. And also, even in the actual region, if you go like 10 miles down the road, the recipes change completely. Like Abruzzo, we've got the seaside and we've got the mountain. So it's all very, very, very varied. So I've gone from Tuscany to Abruzzo and then down south all the way to Sicily. So we're starting with the centre at the moment with Lazio yep. uh, and Abruzzo together here. You did a fusion, haven't you? We have, we've done a bit of a fusion. We've Raised got a few eyebrows. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got here, I'm uh, just cooking very, very slow. I'm cooking some um, pork cheek. Okay? Ah, guanciale. Guanciale. Right. So the guanciale for the carbonara is the most important ingredient, of course. This is guanciale from Le Marche, okay? It's really, so it's got Le, Le Marche. Le is just a bit south, isn't just it? Just next door to Abruzzo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Small, smallest region. Yeah, it's a very small region. So this is uh, a really, really good ingredient. And although it looks fatty, you let it cook in there with the, with the fat like that for a, until it's nice and crispy. And then I've got a pasta sheet here. Obviously, I made some fresh pasta, which is over here. Uh, two eggs, uh, 200 grams of flour, a little bit of salt. And, uh, so, and that's it. Off you go. You roll it, and then you get, end up with a nice sheet like this. And this is a chitarra, okay? Don't know whether anyone's watching. This is a pasta cutter, okay? One side is fettuccine, one side is spaghetti. 
and this is one of the oldest pasta cutter in the world, and it comes from Abruzzo. <laughs> hey, Joe, what have you got in your glass over there? Well, part of our going north to south, actually, we've got some crostini here. You can grab yours. We're going to have a glass of crostini. Yeah. Well, it, there's a sort of Venetian feel, isn't it? Crostini is part of uh, crostini misti, like a bruschetta, crostini. It's all part of an aperitivo. You know, you yeah. go out in Italy before dinner and you have an aperitivo. You order a glass of Prosecco in a bar and they give you all this food. Sometimes I just go out for that. I don't, I mean, I don't even go for dinner. I mean, and that's quite, and for Italy, this is quite universal from Venice, Milan. Milan is famous for its aperitivo, right down to Calabria, where my family are from. And it changes, doesn't it? Because it's quite heavy. We get Russian salad and fried bread in Calabria, <laughs> which is quite wonderful. But if you go to Venice, um, obviously it's more your crostinis and your like crostinis. And so this is the Venetian wine, really, which is Prosecco. So we're up in the mountains between Valdobbiadene and Conegliano, and yes. this sort of beautiful crescent of vineyards, one of the most valuable vineyards in the world as well. You get the Cartizzi Hill, which is very steep, and if you stand on the top of Cartizzi, in a clear day, you can see right down into the plains and out, and you can just pick out Venice in the far distance. Honestly, so within sight. Pe I, I, I people that are watching, if they haven't been there before, I, you know, when we can travel again, just fly to Venice and just go to uh, Valdobbiadene. All this, that stretch of Prosecheria everywhere, it's like you can stop and have a little taste. It's an incredible place. I, I've never been to anything like it. You know, it's really, really brilliant. So what did you just do there, So Valdo? I've just what cut the, start? I've just put the pasta sheet on top, rolling pin, bit of flour, and you roll it and you end up with this. That's beautiful. Magical. So satisfying to see Magical. it. Magical. And, and why just... Guarda quanto è bella. Why did Carbonara develop and kind of emerge in the regions? Because it's central, it's Lazio all the way, really. Across yeah, OK, it. so this goes into the hot boiling water there for three minutes, no longer. Uh, now, Carbonara, Carbonari, mm -hmm. are um, coal miners. Yeah. So they were outside Rome, loads of uh, coal miners, Carbonari, and they, only, and they only had chicken and pigs. And I think that's where the, this recipe comes from. I think they've invented this uh, themselves. And now it's all over the world. But a lot of people make it with different ingredients. And we're not going to say we that know. word. Cream. As we know. <laughs> no, we don't use so it. we've got in this bowl egg yolk, pepper, pecorino, and some parmigiano. A pecorino okay. and now, parmigiano were two of the big northern central cheeses. Absolutely. So we've, we've uh, fused two cheeses here coming together with those eggs, that pepper, when you put it in that guanciale, the oil of that guanciale is gonna cook the pasta. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Marriage, I love you, I've married you, and this is now, I've gotta stay with you, because I've married you. Mr. Fatterini, Sorry, what have you got for wine for us for this? There are two ways you can match wine in Italy. I mean, one of them is to just go, you know, Excuse Italians me. don't tend to think food and wine, they tend to just think meals. So often the wine that's from that part of the world is the thing that goes with the food in that part of the world. But I've gone with a little bit of a twist Ooh. here, because we're going to have a wine called Pecorino. Sheep. As in sheep. And there are various stories. It is probably among the oldest grape varieties. We know Romans drank this, so it's certainly thousands of years old. And it's probably a wild variety. And one of the stories is that it's become known as Pecorino, partly because sheep would graze on it up in the hills. Mm. This is from uh, Le Marque. This one I like. It's unfiltered, isn't it? It's unfiltered, it's slightly cloudy. This is really old school traditional winemaking. So I like these bits where this is a wine that's got some real history. You're actually stepping back. We didn't filter our wines. Ancient great variety in an ancient way of making it. Now I Aldo's... I think it'll go with this. Aldo's on to that point, the manticatura. So now the manticatura is you put your mix in. And right? you've actually made that mix before, haven't you? You're adding yep. that in, yep. breaking you, it down. You mix it in, and now you turn your gas off. Okay, a little bit of pasta water in there. And you say your prayer, you don't get scrambled eggs. Otherwise, you'll end up with scrambled eggs if you don't turn the gas off, okay? And this is your mantecatura of your carbonara, okay? We at Casa Zilli make carbonara like this, and I've, let me tell you something. A bit of pasta water, crucial that you add a little bit of pasta water, okay? And this is our best seller, trust me. Every Saturday night, everybody wants my carbonara. 
Now, Joe, how is that pecorino working with Aldo's carbonara? It's still light and fresh and zesty, but there's um, there is a slightly peck people talk about it. Is it a little bit sheepy? It's not that it's sheepy, but there's an earthiness to pecorino, and I think when you've got that sort of flavour, particularly when you've got the the, the cheek. Actually, something that's too fruity, that's too pure. This is earthy food for coal miners. You want to have more richness around this. This is gorgeous. I like right, this, this a lot. The other alternative, it wasn't for coal miners. This was a dish for anarchists. The Carbonari were also a secret society. And I mean, anarchism and wine has always kind of had a bit of a relationship, hasn't it? It's political subversive. Very much so, yes. And there's lots of symbolism in wine all the time. So often people go and like wines, not just because they like the taste, but because of what it represents. And certainly when you travel around Italy, Sometimes you can find it, you, you don't get anything from beyond 10 miles because people only want to drink the wines from their little part of the world. Aldo, pasta uh, alla chitarra, obviously in a Brutsese dish. What else would you do? If you weren't doing carbonara, what would you have done with? Well, chitarra actually is, in Abruzzo, is not done with carbonara at all because fresh pasta, really, strictly speaking, for carbonara, we should use dried pasta. We shouldn't use egg pasta because it's got egg in it. It's quite rich, isn't it? Yeah, for people that watch it, so they know what I'm talking about. Uh, but because tonight we are talking about Abruzzo, I thought I'd treat you to my uh, chitarra. But originally in Abruzzo, the chitarra is with um, baby meatballs, mm. uh, ragu. So it's made for an every single wedding, every single festa in, a, in Abruzzo has that dish. So there's your carbonara. I'm going to put it right in the center here so everybody can see that and admire it for a little bit until we're ready to taste it a bit later. So the next, that, I mean, before we move on, that is a stunning dish. I mean, in Italy, in Italy, we don't have classics, but we just have these dishes which just kind of are eternal effectively. And I think carbonara has got to be up there now. The second dish, I feel we're putting Aldo under the pressure a little bit here because the next dish, this is a big one, isn't it? What are we doing next? We're going, we're going into Fiorentina. This is big, this, this is, is big. big, this is the best. <laughs> this is a restaurant favorite. This is Latini in Florence, the restaurant I visited. They only fed me ribolita, which is a bean soup and loads and loads of Fiorentina steak cooked in a wood-burning oven and I missed the plane, you name it, I had a flask of red wine on my, uh, on my table, that's, that's all they do. So if you don't want, any, if you don't want the meat or anything like that, don't go to the restaurant, but Latini is amazing. So this is the Fiorentina and this is from Chianina beef. And Chianina, the nice thing is on this one is, Chianina is, is a valley. Uh, yeah. the, the cows are massive. These are giant cows. They're about 2,200 years old. They grow two kilos a day. And Chianina, the valley where the cow comes from, is where Chianti comes from. And that's our wine, isn't it? Just around the corner from Chianti. Absolutely. So we've got Chianti. You but can talk while I just put this on the grill. <laughs> you whilst you put on the grill. We have Chianti Classico. And it's one of those things where they're completely different wines, really. Chianti Classico is one of the great wines in the world. Chianti is sort of everyday drink. It's not bad, but it's not the same sort of league. And the thing to look out for is this black cockerel on the front. Mm. And it's all to do with the history of the Sienese and the Florentines. This is a Florentine wine. Florence, it, it symbol is the black cockerel. And the story goes that you, um, they, they, they were fighting endlessly, the two cities, and they couldn't decide where the border between them lay. So, so what if we have two horsemen that ride towards each other and where they meet, that's the border. I said, that's great, but we don't know when to start because we haven't invented watches yet. So they said, all right, well, when the cockerel crows in the morning, that's when the horsemen set off. And the Florentines had this rather scrawny black cockerel who was really hungry because nobody fed him and they kind of kicked him and stuff. So he <laughs> got up really, really early and the Florentine horsemen set off. But the Sienese had this beautiful, loved white cockerel who slept in. And if you go to the vineyard called Felsina Beredenia, it's almost in suburban Siena because that was how far the guy had got before he met the... Hey, Florence has the bigger boundaries. So it has these huge boundaries. And even today you can meet Florentine winemakers or Cante Classico winemakers. I remember asking one, we could see Siena out of his balcony and I said, where do you live? And he said, I live in the city. 
And I said, what, in Siena? And he, he thumped his fist on the table and he said, my family have not owned a brick in Siena in 700 years. <laughs> And they take it very, very seriously. Italian. And we're going to have a glass of this. I'm going to open it. Is that all right? Okay, open so that. I've, I've seared the, the meat, and now I'm going to put it in the oven for 10 minutes. And this is a nice way. We do it in the restaurants, don't we, to make sure we get that perfect kind of Absolutely. Cook. But, you know, we... Uh, we're about we, to smoke out your kitchen, we, Aldo. If we were in a restaurant... In fact, do you mind if I just <laughs> open this <laughs> window? And there's a wonderful, um, you can link back the Bistecca back to the English because it... English, I love this. English merchants visiting Florence in the, I think it was the 16th century, um, during the time of the Medici, um, during the festival of San Lorenzo, they used to burn bonfires and throw pieces of veal in and the English wine merchants would shout, more beef steak! And it became to the Italians, Bistec. So we get the Bistecca Fiorentina. Now we're going right. Is that right? It is, it, it is right, Aldo. It wow. Uh, I that, trust you, obviously. what a history degree got me from Leeds. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to do now is we're going to go down south and we're going to go past Naples and we're going past where my family are from in Villa San Giovanni. We're, Villa San Giovanni. we're taking a ferry across to Messina and what are we having, Mr Zilli? We're having something that the Sicilians are very proud to own uh, and I am convinced that they own it because I've been there, I've travelled Sicily. Sicily is one of the best, be most beautiful island I've ever been to. It's so big, it's got the mountains, it's got the seaside. It's got so many different recipes. Pasta le sarde being one of my favourites. Uh, Palermo is uh, the, the king, the kings of, uh, of street food are in Palermo. You know, you, got the, you get the spleen there, you get the arancini, you get all sorts of street food. Uh, delicacies, but you can't go to Sicily and not have a cannoli. Cannoli Siciliani is absolutely a must in any part of Sicily you go to. So in the morning, you have people have the midday, people have the mid-morning, some people have desserts, but it's like incredible. So we made the pastry here with eggs, sugar, carb, uh, bicarbonate soda, butter, lemon, marsala. That's that's the you make, you make the pastry and that's what what happens and then this is it you stretch it and these are the little uh, you do molds. need these don't you they're very you important. you do need these yes you could go to Plum Center and get a copper pipe but yeah. these are better but Amazon you know uh, um, cannoli molds they've got them so yeah. there's no nothing nothing uh, too complicated about this and you can put that and in then, the pasta machine can't you yeah if you want you can get yeah. that fixed. And then, and then you fold them and, and uh, close them like this with a bit of an egg wash in there. Close them. Close them really, really well because you want them to fry inside. The, you've got to put this mold in the actual fryer. Okay, so they stay like this. Okay, but these are these are wonderful because you can make them in advance. My mum does this. She makes so them in advance, puts them in a Tupperware you, box. And you, you put get them, them in the, the fryer end. and they fry, and then you end up with something like this okay They're beautiful up but can flawless. you use a bit of copper piping yeah yeah a bit of copper piping you can put a bit of copper pipe my dad copper does that when well he you can it. use anything i mean it's mold, <laughs> doesn't it i mean this is a bit rusty because i've been using it for years <laughs> was that one of the original <laughs> zilly cafe zilly this is my original mold that i brought from sicily i nicked it in, in one of the shops <laughs> and we went to this patisserie to film and i could not find a mold to save my life this is about 15 years ago and I thought, I need to take a mould back. And I couldn't find one to buy. So I just slipped one in my pocket. And uh, in the end, I called the guy when I came back here to tell him that I actually stole it. And I said, this is it. If he's watching, this is it. OK, so <laughs> the feeling to this is really, really crucial. Ricotta cheese, uh, candied peel, candied yeah. fruits, sugar. And, you know, you can fill this with whatever you want. But ricotta cheese is the must. Okay, so I've got some chocolate in here as well. It's all in here. And it's a okay. wonderful cultural marriage because Sicily's had so many different cultures in there. You've got the influence of the Arabs with the candied fruits and the sugars. The Greeks brought ricotta at the time of Archistratus of Syracuse, which is, yeah. you know, we're, we're going back a long time here. You carry on talking while I and just get my And you've got the, right. some spices as well, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, well, it, of course, from the 8th century, the... Yeah. the the Arab occupation of Sicily made it such an important part on the, the spice trail. Um, you've also got Jewish influence. You've got the Angevins with the pastry, the French, the Normans. I mean, this is a real, this is Sicily's diversity really in one dish in many respects. Sicily's really diverse it? when it comes to food. I mean, it's unbelievable. See, you fill them like this, you 
get to the end, I keep filling, you uh -huh. stop till you get to the end the other side, Perfect. then you can fill them a little bit more there. Good enough for, um, good enough for Clemenza in The Godfather in that scene. <laughs> Drop the gun, don't forget the cannolis. I, I can tell see you the what. first place I ever had cannoli was in Corleone. Ah, went, in, in, oh my God, in I can't believe you've been to Corleone. <laughs> Corleone has got to be the best place to Brilliant. go visit. I was taken there and it was a, there was a man, he was a, a vineyard work, um, manager and uh, we were introduced to him and I said, what was his name? And he said, it's Signor Lupo. That was Mr. Mr. Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> and I remember saying to somebody, is that his real name? And they just said, no. <laughs> Signor Lupo. I mean, we never found out what his real name was. It was just always referred to as Signor Lupo. Now, Joe, over there, we have a wine to go with Aldo's cannoli. We wanted something sweet. And I, and I put my foot down on this. You did put your foot down because actually we should be having something like, I don't know, Pasita Pantelleria, you know, Pantelleria, which is this little island, you get these little houses called Shiraffi, which have this slightly weird uh, way of cooling them down, and it's because of the dome in them, it reduces the temperature inside, it gets this sort of draft that comes through. But what we've got is the same grape, Zibibo, which is Muscat of Alexandria, again, ancient grape variety, um, and it's a Pasito, so it's been allowed to dry on mats to concentrate all the sugars so that we get a pudding wine. But this is from Calabria. Viva Calabria! Calabria! <laughs> it's a bit similar to Abruzzo, actually. It is, a little bit raw, a bit of yeah. Tyrone, as you yeah. say. A little bit Tyrone, it means it, like earthy. It's called Alchemia, which I think, as in alchemist, mm. which is a sort of echo to the Arabic influences you get in that part, particularly in Sicily and indeed in Calabria. So it's a, an alchemic wine, alchemia. I'm looking forward to the alchemy of that wine shortly. Now, Aldo, you finished your cannoli. They look absolutely fantastic, worthy of a sultan himself, because there is always this legend around cannoli that it was something created in the harems using, you know, these women had a lot of time spare and um, apparently a lot of them converted to christianity went to monasteries and wh wherever you go in sicily you get this wonderful culture don't you of like sweet patisserie uh, within the monasteries and, and cannoli was reputedly from the origin a leap from the islamic to the christian faith to be fair you know um italy in general is an experience where i, I think that british people that i i did i do shows live shows all the time and I always ask, put your hand up if you haven't been to Italy. And you know, the sometimes the BBC food show has got 2,000 people, and there are a few people still that haven't been to Italy. On that question then, Aldo, I've got something for you, for both of you. Dream Italian vacation. Where are you going? What are you doing? Crumbs, but the dream, like actually the greatest Italian trips I've had have been in Sicily. I mean, there is something remarkable. My family, a long time ago, come from the far end, Switzerland, Switzerland. <laughs> fundamentally, <laughs> Lake Como. Um, but there is something magical when you, you sort of go, and when you go up that, the Concadoro, so the, that ridge that runs around Palermo, and you rise up, and you can see Palermo, this huge, sprawling city that's sort of sitting down the bottom, and you suddenly get onto the top, and you've climbed an enormous amount, and it's the same area where um, the leopard, Lampedusa's ah, great yes, novel, yes. for everything, everything, to, for everything to stay the same, everything must change. Uh, Tancredi's wisdom, and don't go, to, don't go to Sicily without going and taking a copy of the leopard. You have to take a copy. It's a brilliant book. Leopard. Aldo, dream holiday. Where are you going? I what are you doing? You were going to ask me that. It's so different. Rimini. It's so. <laughs> 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 well, actually, it's not far from me. Yeah. Uh, Rimini is great uh, if you're uh, 15 to 20. Yes, I mean, it's great. But if I had to go to Italy uh, tomorrow uh, on holiday, first of all, obviously, I'd choose Abruzzo, I'd fly to Pescara, <laughs> get myself a car, and go and eat in all the um, agriturismo up in the Entroterra, you know, and all, all the rest of it. But uh, having said that, I mean, Tuscany is stunning, mm -hmm. uh, but the south, you know, Campania, whoever hasn't been to Campania, it's a, it's a, it's a crime. Mm. You know, the Amalfi Coast. Napoli. Napoli. You know, you go to Napoli and have the, the Genovese. Mm, you know, yes. although it's called Genovese, there's the nothing to do with Genova. Beef. Ragu. Yeah it's, yeah, it's onions. Yeah. It's a ragu made of, like, bags of onions. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. The cooking down there is second to none. And then, of course, you know, I, I, have, I keep saying it, but for me, Sicily is one of my favorite places that I've been to. You know, you go from Taormina to 
Palermo to Catania, to, all, all these places are incredible. And they're all experiences. Yes, they are. You know, they're they're not Italy, it's not like Italy in Sicily. It's a completely different kettle of fish. Now, traditionally, this week would have been Italian food week. I think it is Italian food week, but obviously under the circumstances, um, it's changed slightly. So um, it's something that the Italian National Tourist Board has always done in the UK. So we're trying to celebrate that. We're trying to channel that today. So I've got another couple of questions for you. Top three cities. Where are you eating? Uh, top three cities. I'll, I'll say mine is Naples, Bologna. And I'm probably going to go to uh, Catania. Really? Two south, one northern central. Bologna is the home. I mean, Bologna is La Grassa, the fat one, isn't it? I was going to say Bologna as well, actually. Uh, to be honest, I've also been to Parma not long ago, and I, I found some amazing restaurants just outside Parma. Really, really there's a, there's a, a mission star restaurant outside there called Cavallino Bianco. Absolutely beautiful place, stunning place. And I've drunk Lambrusco. Mm -hmm. re I've revived myself with Lambrusco. Everybody's reviving themselves with Lambrusco. Yeah. <laughs> it is such a good drink, is Lambrusco. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're in that sort of part of Italy. It goes really well with you know, things like mortadella even. You've got uh, slightly sort of fatty, richer yeah. And, yeah, yeah, meats, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get these very... They're, they're not sweet Lambruscos. They, they, uh, they have a pungency about them. There's a fresh sort of zestiness to them. Bologna, I adore. I remember rocking up in Bologna, having not booked a hotel room, and we turned up with three children in a van, and the hotels just welcomed us with open arms. And I was applauded by a table of nuns when we went to have dinner. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on being anyway, well done. <laughs> on your children. And then this, this, the restaurant owner brought his son around, and his son had had his first child. And I thought, oh, it was well done. And, and he was berated by the restaurant owner, said, this is a real man. He has three children. Goodness knows what he's making me now. I've got five. He's got more. Just one doesn't count. You must have plenty. I can't believe the mortadella that I've eaten in Bologna. Mortadella. When they that, come like... Oh, my God. It's like that, bit, that round, and then it's as long as they go. And they hang it in the windows. And it's those delis... Tamburini, uh, just visiting. off the via, um, the... Um, the Piazza Maggiore. Piazza Maggiore. Oh my, uh, yes. The restaurant there, I mean, I've eaten in all those in that stretch of restaurants. But the Bolito Misto, yeah. mamma mia. All it is is boiled meat. It's just boiled meat. <laughs> but know? I mean, this is the magic of Bolito Misto. Yeah. It, it tastes so good. But it tastes so, so good. With, tongue. with mostarda tongue di Cremona. Yes, yeah, so you've got to have mostarda. Mamma mia, sauces. ragazzi. So I think we're agreed. Bologna then for food. We're, think, all gonna, yeah. we're all going to Bologna. That's think, it. As I soon as lockdown's we'll, we'll And agree. that was where the famous Pellegrino Artusi, who would have been 200 years old this week, he said he was the only thing he said Italians could agree on. That Nap uh, Bologna. <laughs> Bologna. You've got Naples in your head. <laughs> I know. I'm desperate to go back. <laughs> Naples, of course. I think Naples is wonderful. You know, if you're going for some, if you, we went there last year. Um, my girlfriend was pregnant. She said, "Take me somewhere calm and relaxing." I booked Naples, so we went and stayed in the centre of Naples. You know, 35 degree heat in July, no air conditioning, a constant supply of pizza. You know, oh, no. sneaking off while she's having her afternoon nap to go and drink some uh, very, very unrefined um, wine from the Campania Mountains. And yeah, no, a wonderful trip um, and great seafood. Now, Aldo, I'm aware well, that we've got something in the pan over there. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm making the sauce for the. Um uh, for the Fiorentina, but I don't know whether the Fiorentina will be cooked in time for when we finish. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a shame, but uh, we, we will be eating it a bit later on. In the meantime, Joe, shall we nip over Ooh. to... Whoa. That looks perfect, Aldo. <laughs> while, while Aldo's putting out a small... No, right, it's not pile, burned, it's not let's burned. Let's try this, um, let's try this pudding wine. If I pour, then you can come and grab your glass. I will, because I've been in true... Uh, do you know what? That colour has thrown me. Big what? time. Why? Were you expecting it to be darker? Slightly, yeah. Well, that uh, can be a bit of a myth. So we'll give it a swirl around. We'll do it properly. Hold it by the stem, not by the bowl. I don't know, it's just a weird thing I have about holding it by the stem, not the bowl. So Give guys, the Fiorentina is Ooh. cooked, but it needs to rest now. So we need to rest it for a... The resting is as important as the cooking. It's usually about... The, is it about 10, 15? Same, same time, yeah. About 15, 20 minutes. OK, so that's the Fiorentina. What sauces have you got going the, on there, The Robin? sauce is so simple. Garlic, rosemary and chilli. The that, classics of Tuscan, isn't it? Yeah, oh. and yeah. we're going to 
serve it as a tagliata. So we're going to hold it. I know it needs to rest, but you know, we could cut it's it. It's nearly Christmas, Aldo. Do you know what I mean? Slice so, the beast. Okay, then. Let's go for this. Uh, While Aldo's slicing that, Joe, what was his just, we were just... This talking. is gorgeous. So this is, um, it's a Moscato. We call it um, Zibibo. Now, Moscato is a brilliant name. The Romans called it Uva Aperia. And if you are a Latin scholar or an apiarist, you will know that that's bees. And it's so aromatic when you have a smell. It's like honey. It's like honey and floral. And it's because bees were, the smell was so intense, bees were attracted to it. Of course, mosca in Italian is a fly. Fly. And it's because flies find it very attractive. So Romans have a slightly more romantic way. It was the bee grape variety. Right. Today, it's the moscato is the fly great variety but it's because it's so aromatic that it attracts insects something which is attracting me right now is the wood look at this that's a monster there you go that's for the dog <laughs> lucky dog i think i think if a dog doesn't mind i'll take that home with me i'd uh, quite happily just have a go at that <laughs> nor on a bone and so what happens here okay so that's cooked perfectly i would say yeah. i think so that if is. that rests it'll cook a little bit more I and it'll be like absolutely that, perfect okay and then what you do is you cut it at an angle like this. Do you do that thing with your fingers and thumbs? Well done. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sort of there, medium, rare, rare. Yeah. That, you, I mean, that is... That you is can do, but uh, when you get to my age, you just uh, listen to your, uh, to your oven or you listen to your tools <laughs> and uh, you just know. Okay, so I'm not going to cut the fat off, as you can see. Okay, so this is the tagliata here. We need um, some good salt on that. Okay. There you go. That then, broke every government's uh, health and safety guideline, I think, going, the amount of salt. But it's good. <laughs> we don't do it every salt day. Salt and fat equals flavour. Listen, what are you talking about? You know, the government has been telling us to do all sorts of things that we don't believe. <laughs> uh, do you believe the government? If you believe the government, then... Uh, um, you shouldn't believe me. <laughs> okay, so you heard that here first. That's, of course, not our official line on this. Right. So, so Aldo, obviously, this is a dish from uh, Tuscany. It's famous around Fiorentina, um, Florence. And uh, what else? I mean, what are the other? We mentioned Rivolita, the famous bean soup. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple of other things, aren't there? I mean, they're very, again, they like spleen, don't they, up in Florence? Yeah, they do. They eat a lot of inside animals. Um, uh, fegato. Yeah. Fegato Veneziana is... Uh, it's a must if you go to an Italian restaurant, if you, can eat, if you, if you like liver. But, Love you know, um, I used to sell... Liver was actually one of my best sellers in, uh, in one of my first restaurants, Signor Zilli in Dean Street, where uh, we managed to lock up uh, Prince Edward in his, uh, in his, um, ah, yes. in his fiance. This was, one of, this was one of the famous stories from... Um... I know, I know. I, I didn't think I'd bring it up, but why not, eh? <laughs> You know, <laughs> she's in the jungle at the moment, so why not bring it up? <laughs> and she, she needs to mention me in the jungle. But yeah, Prince Edward. Uh, so hey, here we go now. And this is just like, I, I guess, like, I think, a, like a, a, a baptism, a final benediction of the steak, isn't it? They're just Absolutely. adding that flavour right at the very end. And like and you now, said... Because, because I haven't let it rest too much, uh, that's why it's bleeding a little bit. But normally what we do is we dress it with rocket. I was reading something that apparently before the Second World War, rocket was seen as something like animal fodder. It was considered a weed, and Italians never really ate it. They used it as a seasoning, and it's yeah, something it was animal thing. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't, and it was actually after the war that people started to use this as a salad dressing because there was nothing left to eat it, before the Marshall Plan came in and started to provide. And I don't like squeezing lemon on meat because it, I just kind of takes it away. Well, doesn't so, it cook it as well, that acid? Yeah, so just... I, I just like to, just a little bit of zest on top of the rocket yeah. there, a little bit of this wonderful cheese on top of the rocket again. And then what I do like, I made some, uh, I, I make this myself, and it's a chili oil. So we, what we do is we put um, lots of dried chilies in a pan and, um, and fresh chili together. And then we put lots of oil in it. We just leave it very low heat until it's like two or three hours, and then we take it, you take it out, you let it rest for as long as you've cooked it, and that's, there's your chili oil. This is to die for this chili oil. And this is your Fiorentina um, made by Aldo Zilli, and trust me, when you try this tonight, everybody that's watching 
is going to want to order this. Um, please order it because I will do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are watching that, there's a guarantee. Just uh, message in, send us something on Zoom and Aldo will deliver it for you. Now, we've also got a little bit of chilli oil on the side there. Yeah. Yep. So that's three fantastic dishes. We've got the carbonara, which of course is that staple of kind of really from Lazio across to Umbria, Tuscany, and made famous by coal miners charcoal burners, anarchists, and even a couple of Neapolitan kings if we take the history back further. We've got the cannoli, which of course comes from that Arabic, Greek, French tradition, and Aldo's wonderful Bistecca Fiorentina, a dish which has its roots with possibly some times to England, which I quite like that. I think that's quite nice. Joe, um, out those wines, which one would you be taking home with you tonight? You know, one of my desert... People, people often say, well, you're a wine person, what's your desert island wine? I'd take Chianti Classico every time. Really? And it's incredibly versatile. And actually, in summer, you can chill it just a little bit. Not much. I mean, you would just want to give it 10, 15 minutes or so in the fridge. And it becomes this much fresher wine. But we forget that Chianti Classico was actually a white wine producing kind of region. Within living memory, people there were growing vines around olive trees. You've got the olives there. There. So you can look at maps and all it was was olive trees and a vine would sort of grow up and around them. I've been to one vineyard, it's owned by Michelangelo, and they said it was almost certainly white wine that he grew. But it's just, it can still be kind of fresh and bright. The big reservas, you know, they always want to be a little bit warmer, but that's what, that's one of my favourite wines in the world. But not Tignanello or Brunello or anything like that. Well, it's, but then you start to sort of move down into Bulgari, and it's funny you should say about bean soups, because people often, I remember being told that people used to have bean soups because it protects you against malaria. And when Bulgari and that coastline yeah, yeah, area yeah. was really wet and marshy. There were so many sort of mosquitoes that people used to get malaria, but they'd protect themselves by eating bean soup, and like manja fagioli sort of thing. <laughs> now I know why I'm so well. I, I eat bean soup all the time. It's very good for you, bean soup, I tell you. Oh, it's, Bulgari is exciting now, and making some brilliant wines around Bulgari. I'm a big fan. Around and if any of you are watching out there and you have um, the package where the wine, obviously we've got one of our wines from the wine sponsor at Wine It, and it's Nero Davila, which is actually one of my favourite wines. It's my Sunday afternoon cooking a ragu. Transport me back to the, to the, to the mountains and coasts of southern Italy. Um, but if you are drinking that, I hope you're really enjoying it, because I haven't opened that yet, but it might find its way into my glass. I must say, the Chianti is... Aldo, have you tried some of the Chianti? Yes, the Chianti on, is I haven't tried anything. You, you two have been talking. I know, I, I've been quite and, bad. And, and drinking. And that's, I've that's not had my glass. Of, of, I need, to, I need some oh, peck no, of no, I've not tried... Right, we'll... we'll do, if, I'll... I'll it, there we go. We're two meters it's apart. It's a distance there. there. As long as you're uh, uh, far away there. enough from me, I'll I think be fine. we should have a socially distance. Uh, salute, salute, de lupo, salute, gentani. Salute. There we go. Salute to everyone that is watching. And uh, to you at home, we love you all. You know, we can't see you at the moment, but please, please, please bear with us. Mm. It's only a matter of time where we can all come back together and so hug nice. and kiss and party. Where will be the first place you will go to when, um, in Italy, the first, the, at the first airport destination you'll be flying into? Pescara. Pescara. Only because I've got to go and see my family, really. <laughs> Jeff, no, I haven't got to, but uh, I, would, I would like to. I suspect I'll be flying into Rome. I'm going to go and visit a friend um, in a place called Cecina. He has a, a winery called Igreppi. And it's a super Tuscan winery, and I've been waiting to go. And it's brilliant because the friend is, is from Northern Ireland. His winery manager is Welsh. Um, his winemaker is from the United States. And there's only one person in the winery who comes from Italy. And we've been desperate to go for ages and ages. And I sort of talked to him and said, oh, you must come. So I'm going to go and visit Bulgari, I think, when I, when I get the chance and eat and drink too much. Really? I think I'm going to... I've got a little baby, a new baby. So I'm thinking... Fly down to Naples, train down to Villa San Giovanni, meet the ants off the train, pass the baby to the ants. <laughs> That's why you're going there. Have a couple of nights off in Schiller and then, <laughs> and then maybe pick up Bambina and, and do... I was thinking Puglia because I think Puglia is a wonderfully fantastic family-friendly place. gone absolutely mad with tourism, but only, only ro just right because it's an amazing region. It is, and it's got, I think there's, when I went, I went to Bari and Brindisi and, um, uh, where did they do the bread? Um, the famous bread, uh, the Pampugliese. Uh, it's, I've completely forgotten it. Altamura. Uh, Altamura. 
And when I went, it, there felt like a similarity between almost like the south coast of the UK. There was, you know, you had stone. It was like Kent. You had stone walls. I love it because it's flat. Yeah. You know, Ge a I gentle cycle roll. When I go down there, I go on holiday and I stay in this uh, uh, masseria. You know, this uh, transformed uh, masseria, which is uh, like a townhouse, like a house like this, they transform into hotels. Mm. It's crazily beautiful. And it, the food is to die for. But unfortunately, celebrities, A-list celebrities have ruined the region now because everything <laughs> is so expensive. So I can't go there anymore. Well, that's down to you, Aldo, I think. <laughs> no, no, it was Tom Cruise. It was, uh, it, loads of A-list celebrities have been down there and loads, they're doing loads of weddings for princes. And yeah, they're, they're really, really famous, Puglia now. It's incredible. And the prices have gone joop. But we love you, Puglia, still. We're still going to come. Right, well, I mean, we've, we've cooked the food. We've drunk the wine. Um, it's kind of all we've got time for. Um, so thank you very much to Aldo and a big thank you to Joe Fatterini. It's an absolute pleasure. We've really enjoyed working tonight with National Geographic Traveller and the Italian National Tourist Board to bring you this event. And we've all kept COVID safe. We've all stayed at arm's distance. The crew are all wearing masks. A big thanks to them as well for complying. Also, thank you to our product sponsor, Wine It. And Kamusi, who have done these, the, the wonderful aperitivo at the front. Just if you here. purchased a VIP ticket, you'll now leave this webinar and click on your second VIP link, and we'll see you in just a moment. Otherwise, thanks to you all out there. Stay safe, and of course, stay inspired. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Grazie.